It's no secret that Ubisoft has been in a lot of trouble this last year, particularly with many of their big releases failing to catch on with audiences and them losing probably hundreds of millions of dollars on each launch as a result of all this. But this is something that leadership over at Ubisoft is well aware of, that their games just aren't landing with audiences. And I think in some respects they understand why, but they refuse to address the problem because when it comes to a lot of this social justice stuff being pushed in the gaming industry, there are various camps as to why this is happening. Some people do it because they think that's just the prevailing winds and they're like, well, we need to get on board with this because that's what everyone's doing. Come to find out that's not profitable. So they start shifting courses. Other companies, though, like Ubisoft, on the other hand, are actually true believers in the cost and they're going to continue going down this route, even if it proves to be detrimental to them. And that's kind of where we're getting to the subject of today's story with the headline. Assassin's Creed executive producer admits Ubisoft does not know where players are and how the company can reach them. This article talks about uh, uh, Mark Alexis Kute, uh, one of the executives over at Ubisoft and one of the producers behind the upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadows, where he was given a talk at, uh, what is it, uh, External Development Summit 24, uh, in, during that summit he was asked a question about where he thinks development will be going in the next three to five years he says as a company they need to be able to innovate in order to try to stay in tune with what's going on in the world he then follows it up next uh, he shared how the company does not know where players are and does not know how to get them to play their games this shouldn't be something that they're questioning right now because ubisoft is a major company at this point they've been around for decades and they've been kind of a staple within the AAA gaming industry. So they should have a pretty firm player base at this point. But since they don't know where their players are, that just goes to show that they've lost that over the years. He said, we need to find where players are, which has been a question I've been having for the last two years. Where are players? What are they playing? Where do we reach them? All of this will become clear in the upcoming years as our industry transforms. And the answer is pretty obvious. They're just not playing their games. So, I mean, I know that's obviously the case, but we know what games are actually being uh, played nowadays and what's popular out there. Even in, uh, I'm not even talking about the games like Fortnite and uh, Call of Duty and stuff like that, because obviously that's not what the type of game that Ubisoft play or Ubisoft produces. They make more story and adventure type games, or at least a lot of their bigger ones are like that, but there's still a lot of story and adventure based games out there that are really popular. And one of the things that uh, actually a lot of these games have in common is the fact that they prioritizing just having fun gameplay and not trying to push any identity politics first and foremost. So I wouldn't say that they prioritize not doing that stuff because you really can't prioritize not doing something but they prioritize the quality of the game first and foremost, and they bring in the best people to work on said games that actually do that. Ubisoft, on the other hand, doesn't believe that. They believe that they want to try to produce the best quality stuff possible while still having a bunch of diversity hires and still trying to push the message that they very much want to push out there. Ironically, earlier in the same interview, Kute revealed that one of the company's main goals with his game is to change people. He revealed that one of the first questions that CEO Yves Gaumont asks when he's being pitched by developers within the, uh, within the game is, what will players learn? I don't think this should be a priority whatsoever. They're not an educational company. They're not, or I guess they think they're doing something like that. Their priority should always be just producing a fun game uh, with an interesting story. That's where they should be focusing on. If you can get something else out of it, you can learn something or you can have a little bit of a message in there. That's fine. Most gamers out there aren't opposed to having a message in your property. They just don't like it when that is the forefront because then everything else kind of takes a back burner. And when you're creating video games, you need to create something that players like, uh, whether it's a good story or just fun mechanics. Kute explained when he asked this question, what I think has driven Eve uh, for 36, 37 years now is this idea that video games can change the world. Um, I, I guess they can change it as much as any art form can, but I think he's kind of a little bit uh, 
I don't know, maybe delusions of grandeur or something like that. If he thinks that they're really a lot more bigger deal than what they really are, which is an entertainment medium. And you start uh, changing the world by changing people. And if you give them something to think about, even while they're having fun, right? If they can learn something, then they can like, uh, then they can like change one person. You can change the world. He added. See, I think this is the big problem right there. They're wondering like, where did our player base go? Why aren't people playing our games like they used to? And at the same time, they're trying to say we're prioritizing changing the world and changing people and trying to educate them as opposed to just making fun games out there. Regardless, Kute ad ad admission that Ubisoft does not know where players are and does not know what games they are playing reflects a year of disasters for the company. Uh, the company released Skull and Bones earlier this year and then eventually on Steam in August. The game only hit a peak concurrent player count of just 26, uh, 2,615 that's abysmal for the game that they were touting as the first quadruple a game. Uh, I forget what the exact numbers are, but it was like 400 million or something like that. That's reported that they lost on skull and bones. And that's just one of their releases. They've also had several other major releases out this year uh, at X defiant star Wars outlaws, and then upcoming assassins creed shadows, which by all accounts, that looks like that's going to be another failure for them. Uh, the trailers for that just getting ratioed and a lot of people being critical over the choices that they're doing within that game, especially the focus of Yasuke as a main playable character, as opposed to someone of Asian descent, because, you know, this is the first Assassin's Creed game set in Japan. So a lot of people are wanting to play as asian people or an asian lead character but they had to comb through japanese history in order to try to find someone who wasn't asian in order to justify having the inclusion of yasuke as the lead playable character and this is kind of the big problem with ubisoft is they're not focused they're that's their focus on everything i've already mentioned this in this video but i don't think it can be stressed enough they're not prioritizing good gameplay mechanics or necessarily even good story or anything like that. They're focusing on the message and what they can learn from it. And I've said before in other videos that that's not necessarily a bad thing for a company to say like the, when you have this DEI stuff injected in a game, what that really says is this is where the company puts their priorities first and foremost. If you see it on kind of the public facing aspects, like in the actual entertainment, such as, a movie, TV show, or game, then it stands to reason that this is also what the company will be doing behind the scenes. And behind the scenes, if the company is prioritizing DEI elements, well, then you're not necessarily hiring the best people for the job to produce this stuff. So a lot of people will try to defend these practices and say like, well, no, it's not that these games are bad because of these woke elements inserted into it. They're bad because of other issues with the development, uh, maybe the poor mechanics, uh, poor writing, you get the idea. Uh, but I would say they're just kind of linked in that it's because the company is not hiring the best people for the job. That's why you get those poor uh, gameplay mechanics with it. The company's biggest flop was Star Wars Outlaws. The game was supposed to sell at least 5 million copies in its first uh, copy based on consecutive estimates from official or uh, conservative estimates from a, f a financial analyst. However, rumors from inside gamer claim the game only sold 1 million copies in its first month. Ubisoft has not released any official numbers, which that means, you know, it's bad because if they actually made a lot of money on it, then they would be releasing those numbers. Also to point out after the game launched, they lost a huge amount of their stock value. So investors who saw some of the numbers from behind the scenes, obviously weren't happy with the way star wars outlaws was performing but admit that the game sales underperformed uh, sales expectations furthermore ubisoft announced that drew uh, rechner uh, would be the game's new creative director seemingly replacing julian garrity uh, finally in the wake of star wars outlaws seemingly massive financial disaster the company delayed assassin's creed shadows from its november release date to february 14th uh there was rumors going around that this was to replace Yasuke. I don't think that's going to be the case. I do think they are going to try to fix it because one of the issues with Star Wars Outlaws is what I was saying before. There's just a lot of bugs and other problems like that within the game, graphical errors and 
frames dropping and other stuff like that poor ai and that could directly be laid at the feet of the fact that they're not hiring the best people to work on it they're hiring the best people who check the right boxes for them uh maybe they're hoping with the delay of assassin's creed shadows that they'll give them enough time to actually fix some of these errors uh I'm not really confident that that's going to be the case. I think they probably could polish it up enough so it doesn't necessarily seem like a complete disaster and it's not an embarrassing launch for them. But I think right now, many people are just kind of tired with what they're doing. And uh, uh, Mark Alexis Kute uh, questioning where their gamers are. The gamers have always been exactly where they are right now. They're just playing good games that are fun to play. and. So far, what Ubisoft has been doing hasn't been producing that. Like they even say, they're not necessarily looking to produce the best quality stuff, or they might not phrase it as that, but they're looking to try to change the world and teach people something and send a message or whatever. It's like, well, if that's what you're going to do and that's what you're going to prioritize, fine, uh, write a book or something like that. But that's not what you should be doing with gameplay. Like I said, you should be focusing on producing a fun story uh, with a fun gameplay mechanics first and foremost and if you can actually slip all that other stuff in there we're in kind of the background then fine you can do that but if you're going to prioritize that element to it then you're kind of putting the horse before the car and uh or what the car before the horse <laughs> sorry man i messed up that one already but yeah you're you're basically have your priorities not in line and that's why your games have been failing this last year so you need to correct that course if you want to start selling games, but right now with the current leadership at Ubisoft, I don't think they're capable of doing that. And if they did sell the company or take the company private, like some rumors are speculating that they're looking to do, well, you're still going to have the same leadership. So it's not like Ubisoft is going to fix itself as a result of all that. It's still going to be more of the same. The only difference is they just ha don't have shareholders to be accountable to at that point. But let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Would you be willing to go back to an Ubisoft game if they go back to how things used to be where they weren't necessarily prioritizing sending out their message before everything else? And also, if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with the latest entertainment news. And don't forget to click that like button and share this out there because it really helps out with the channel. Thank you.